courtesy of Sky Sports News, it looks like Harry Kane is staying at Tottenham. After all that posturing and moaning and crying on TV and getting, you know, Gary Neville to do a flipping or a walk and talk or, you know, talk and walk and talk, talk and walk or whatever, interview with him on Sky Sports, it looks like Danny Levy has won and Harry Kane is not going anywhere this summer, at least. Um, it's headline coach of Sky Sports, Harry Kane announces he is to stay at Tottenham this summer after third Man City bids. I love how he's trying to say he's staying as opposed to Tottenham aren't letting him go. But hey, you got to do what you got to do in your brand. Um, we continue, we scroll down. It says Harry Kane has announced he will stay at Tottenham this summer after a move to Manchester City failed to materialise. Kane, who has three years left on his Spurs deal, had asked to leave the club this summer in search of silverware, but appears to have softened his stance following the long summer of negotiations between City and Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy. In a post on Twitter, he said the following. You see the post of him. Um, it was incredible to see the reception from the Spurs fan on Sunday and to read some of the messages of support I've had in the last few weeks. I'll be staying at Tottenham this summer and will be 100% focused on helping the team achieve the success. He did say this summer, um, the transfer window reopens in January, so there is a possibility that City could come in from then. But considering how how unlikely it is for big teams to do such big deals in January, most likely City will move on and sign somebody else or either wait for Haaland to come available next season wait for Mbappe or maybe or maybe just go for Lewandowski now because he's already you know given um, the bat signal for wanting a new challenge and for Bayern Munich that might seem like a sensible solution because he's not going to go to one of their rivals in the Bundesliga um, out of sight out of mind of course you might come back to terrorize him in the Champions League but for the most part that makes more sense and it's quite a sobering if not depressive place to be if you're Harry Kane because essentially his dream of winning silverware at another big club is slowly but surely fading away and it isn't because of his talent, because if Mbappe Haaland didn't, weren't around, he would still be the number one striker. He would be the number one striker um, available on the market at the moment. But considering Mbappe's and Haaland's profile and their ages, it just seems like better business and a more of a shrewd way of doing stuff to try and get those guys in your team and kind of build your team around them and have them be the next sort of like you know cult icons or stars um hopefully try and get them to believe in your project get a manager sport director in that could do the job and then try and collect trophies for however long those guys stay at your club that's probably the best way to do things right um Mbappe's in his early 20s Haaland's still in his mid I think or just uh, maybe younger than that so they're far younger than and then Kane they offer a lot more on the pitch and it looks like as the years progress, Kane's ability to tr attract those big clubs is going to dwindle because of his injury record, because of his age, because of the way he plays. It's just it's just an unfortunate situation. But in general, it's more so unfortunate because he had plenty of chances to leave the club, um, especially at his peak or during the height of his time, maybe in 2018 when he signed that contract extension. And it felt like he was just really comfortable. He was comfortable playing in the Premier League. He wasn't being that ambitious, which was okay. I just did think a lot of people were basically placing a lot of their hopes and dreams on Kane or were basically more... I felt like the fans wanted him to move and try and win trophies because they loved him so much more than he wanted himself. He didn't really feel like he was ever pushing to try and win the league with another team, to try and win Champions League. He was just happy to, you know, be a, effectively a big fish in a small pond, which is the, which is the bad thing because he earns an amazing wage as the captain of the team. He's the captain of England, right? Is he captain of England or is it Harry, or Harry Maguire? It doesn't matter. But we guys, you know what I mean. Um, it's worked out pretty well for him. But from a silverware point of view, it's getting harder and harder to see where that's going to happen or how it's going to happen. Unless maybe you go to like an Italian team, you know, you can maybe could you switch pitch him in an Inter, in a Juve maybe in the future. Um, that could be a good way to get yourself a guarantee yourself a league title and a couple of trophies, domestic ones. I don't really know, but this is definitely proof that if ever there was any doubt that Daniel Levy is the toughest chairman to deal with in football or the toughest person to deal with in football full stop maybe um only second to Mino Raiola this is it he did not budge because he knew in it 150 million for Tottenham is doesn't mean anything doesn't do much doesn't move the needle how many good players can they buy for 150 how many good players do that that they want can they get for 150 especially now so late in the window it's not going to happen so there's no point in losing somebody that's going to guarantee you 20 plus goals per season um, just so you can get the money to buy other players, which you're not guaranteed to even get when you get the money. And everyone knows you have the money, so they're going to try and overcharge you for players who 
aren't worth the money that they're putting on them. It's just, yeah, it's just shit show all around. But it's just hilarious to see how all of those tactics, just from a main night point of view, didn't work. And now he's having to come back with his tail tucked in between the legs and pretend like the fans love him, which they probably do, Spurs, because, you know, it's Spurs. They don't really have much to cheer for, really. They're, never, they're probably not going to finish in the top four ever again. Um, so, yeah, and he they've got a one truly world-class player in their ranks. Of course, they're going to welcome him back on the pitch and be happy he's staying, of course. It continues, it says, um, Kane, who has been a target for City all summer, came off the bench in Saturday's 1-0 win um, in his first appearance since returning for late for pre-season, where he went on strike and didn't turn up for training. The England captain, Doe, remains adamant he was always scheduled to come back later. Spurs value Kane upward of £120 million, but were keen to keep the striker despite believing he had a gentleman's agreement with Levy to leave the club this summer. Um, City made an offer of €100 million Euros for Kane at the start of June, but were unable to come close to the agreement with Spurs. To be fair, it's quite a, it's quite insane to think that you can offer €100 million for Grealish and then only €100 million for Kane, especially consider Harry Kane's CV and his track record in the league. That is obviously way off the mark. If I was Tottenham, I would hold that for 200 M's. Fuck it. He's guaranteeing you 20 goals, even though he misses, what, two months of the season or, or maybe even a month. Let's, let's be fair to him. Harry Kane always misses one month of the season, all the time. So, you know, 200 million is light work for Kane. You know, 20, especially if you're Man City. He might fire you to another league title, bonuses and all that guaranteed. He might fire you to another FA Cup win. He might fire you to getting as close as possible to winning a Champions League. It's a really no-brainer in all intents and purposes. But, you know, Man City like to pretend that they're a scrappy, small startup club that can't spend money and shit. So that's probably why they didn't want to splash a 200 M's because that would really reveal their financial power that we all know they have. But yeah, um, unlucky Harry Kane, you know, Stanley Levy 2, Harry Kane 0. Um, he wasn't able to escape the clutches of Levy and now he's having to pretend like he always wanted to stay at Tottenham even though he purposely tried to leave. <laughs> 